Disney theme park characters, have there been situations where you had to break character? What was the reason? Consequences? A bit late to the thread. Wife doesn't have a Reddit but she's a Disney princess. She has a lot of passion for her job and has never broken character. It's a fireable offense. The girls know that their job is coveted so they're on their best behavior. If they break character in a bad way, Disney will quickly replace them with another girl going to the monthly auditions. She loves a good dad joke so one guest made a real clever one while she was meeting his kid and instead of her in-character princess laugh, she genuinely laughed. The stories she tells me are insane, hysterical, sad, and heartwarming. If anyone wants to hear more, she's more than happy to share. Omitting any details that'll jeopardize her job. Asterisk get it for grammar. I was at Disneyland once and the sheriff of Nottingham was fake menacing a child. He reached out to touch the kid's balloon and for some reason it popped. The character actor was clearly stunned. A new balloon appeared less than 30 seconds later. I have a close friend who was Woody for a while at Disneyland. He said that one time the afloat caught on fire during a show and they had to play it off. Completely in character, they danced around it and had to quickly get it backstage to deal with the problem this year. He said they played it off well enough that no one seemed to notice there wasn't any panic. He said he had never seen an instance of anyone breaking character because everyone was very well trained and there's always at least six or so cameras that can see you at all times. I also one time offered an unopened water bottle to an employee when it was near 100 degrees and he said if anyone at Disney saw that, he would be fired. They can't take anything from guests. He also mentioned the cameras constantly watching both crew and patrons. Edit, I texted my friend to confirm and he has given me another story to share. One time an acrobat fell off a float, face planted into the ground and knocked herself out. They had to surround her in a circle and dance in sync as they dragged her body away. They played it off well and apparently no one noticed. I wasn't a character but was a cast member. I was walking from backstage into the park. If you've seen the transitions, they are S-shaped to keep people from peeking in. I was pushing a dolly, hand cart. The ones we used had two long supports sticking out from the end. As I was going though Winnie the Pooh was walking in from the other side. I hit him, her square in the leg with it. Hearing Winnie the Pooh say, fuck, was a pretty damn funny. I watched Jack Sparrow talking to a kid when the kid started puking everywhere. He said, too much of the ol' apple juice, eh? Been there myself. Even ran out once. Quote dot. All the while, the kid is just projectile vomiting everywhere. My cousin used to do this when I was a kid. We'd always go try to find her on days we knew she was working. She mostly played Pooh Bear. She would never say out loud, Hi Nougatuck, but she would get very animated and jump around to give us hugs. Occasionally she'd still say things like, I have a rumbly in my tummy. I thought I was the coolest kid cause I knew Pooh Bear. Wow, they don't mess around with their silence vow huh? WDW character department at Magic Kingdom many years ago. I can't remember breaking character but I do remember working the restaurant at the Contemporary for dinners. One time we had a make a wish kid as a guest and they were just the most awesome kid. And it was just heartbreaking to know why they were there. So our lead let us do a group hangout with the kid for something like an hour in costume. Playing and running around and having fun. You could never play like that in the parks. You'd start a kid riot. No consequences, we just all hoped we made that little kid happy. Bonus fun fact, the goofy costume for the electric light parade was worn by a float driver. Because the driver was seated, no pants with that costume. Just the glittery top and head and gloves. I wasn't a character but worked closely with them, as a photographer. Disney performers are trained to never break character for whatever reason. They have ways of signaling their character attendant that they are in distress. And it's generally up to the character attendant to avoid any weird or uncomfortable situations. As far as weird situations, they do get people that stalk them in the park. 
like some people get in those lines multiple times to get a photo with a specific performer. The weird side of Disney fanatics or something else. I've seen articles that face characters can leave at any time if harassment is bad. Using in character excuses, costume characters always have an attendant with them to control unruly guests. Worked at the Disney Store in late 87 and 88 in Orange County, California. I think, at the time, it was like one of only a handful of stores open. The back of the store had a big screen, where we constantly played some Disney video. Every once in a while, the biggest, muscular, blackest, gayest dude would come in and kindly request we play anything poo-related. He'd then proceed to prance around the store. He came in the evenings, towards closing, and sing the Tigger parts of either dialogue or any song. Turns out he was one of the Tiggers at Disneyland. Dude just loved being Tigger. I couldn't even get the zombies at Halloween Horror Nights to break character. Asked one where the restroom was and he flung his arms in the proper direction and grunted. Pretty hilarious. When I was six or so, I went to Disney World with my mom and aunt and cousins. I really wanted Captain Hook's autograph but per his character, he wasn't supposed to give it. I started crying over it. And my mom went and asked him again. Nicely. I hope and told him that I was very upset over it. He signed my book, even though he wasn't supposed to, and I always thought that was neat. So, to Captain Hook from 1989 or so. If you're out there, thanks. And I hope you didn't get in trouble for that. One of the traditions for our college sorority back in the 80s was that the day after initiation, all the new members and their big sisters would go to Disneyland sporting their brand new letters to wear, one of the costume characters in the parade kept throwing gang signs or something at us and we were so confused, turns out it was one of our sisters who had to work that day. She was trying to do our sorority's hand symbol, but with her hands in oversized furry gloves it didn't show up so well lol. A few days ago, me, my sister and her friend went to the new Galaxy's Edge area. My sister's friend was around 6 feet 1 inch and had never seen Star Wars. We were walking around and Chewbacca ran up to her, he was around her height, and hugged her. The he put his hand above his head, showing they were both tall. She was super embarrassed and while we were walking away, he did that fist pump thing. Since then we refer to her as Chewbacca's girlfriend, seriously the cutest thing ever. I went once and a man was harassing Cinderella so she excused herself to the bathroom and ran to a security guard. I hugged the snot out of Stitch a couple of years ago and I'm pretty sure that I heard a squeak. If you're reading this friend of Stitch, I'm very sorry for hugging you so hard. They don't break character. If a nuke fell on Disney, they'd be ushering you into the bomb shelters as Aladdin or whatever. The type of people that play characters are very into it. If something comes up that needs to be addressed they will handle it in character. You've probably heard stories about characters helping kids find their parents. These days characters always have handlers nearby that have walkie-talkies. A face performer broke character for my husband and I. I won't say which park. But we took a trip to Disney about two months after our infant son died. He was our first, our entire nursery was Neverland, Peter Pan themed. We always wanted to take him to Disney, have him meet Peter. Well, he couldn't, I got a memorial tattoo. An exact replica of my son's hospital ink hand print. And we got a picture of Peter Pan with a tattoo. We were alone with him and his handler. I tearfully explained the situation before asking him to pose with my arm as your he took lots of photos with my tattoo in us, and afterward he hugged me tight, told me he was proud of me, and God bless us, and he was so so sorry for our loss. It was amazing, emotional, and I'll never forget that Peter Pan was proud of me for finding the strength to keep on living. It honestly meant the world. I'm so glad he broke character. I'll always treasure those photos and that memory. I wouldn't say break but I was a lifeguard and I had to ban this kid from going down the water. 
slide. Every single time I told him he had to be feet first and every time he said, okay. But he kept going head first and it got to the point where the other kids saw him and were copying him this year. He left and cried to mom and dad and I explained to mom and dad why. They left and cried to my coordinator and my cord came back saying that wasn't very magical. I explained after several times of this kid not listening, other kids were copying him this year. In any case I got a stern talk to about being the nice lifeguard who explains why versus the mean lifeguard who just yells orders. Later that day that kid was running across the deck. Despite several requests not to tripped and ate concrete, person shrugging male sign, don't hate me because I don't feel bad. Awesome question. I don't work at a park, but I took some time to look through some older threads for some relevant responses to get the discussion going. You, the Bushidi said here, at the mouse we had a kid who had a checklist shirt on. On it said Darth Maul checkmark Darth Vader checkmark then the last one beat cancer checkmark the kid was 6 years old. Then I'm told backstage that the parents wanted to do something special for him in the show. But my director couldn't find a spot in the show where this special moment would work. So we finished the show, Jedi Training Academy, and set up a meet and greet with the kid. I get out there, and this kid's whole family is at the greeting area, I mean everyone. So I hear, okay champ you ready? Kid replies, yup, he pulls out this pill swallows it and the family breaks down, crying. The kid yells I'm a real Jedi, come to find out the kid took his last chemo pill that eradicated his cancer in front of us. He waited all morning to show us that he was brave and a true Jedi. We were all holding back tears. You, in underscore the underscore vortex said here. I worked at Club Disney for the brief time it was open. We had codes we used on the radio headsets that were coordinated with character names. For instance, code blue meant there was blood that needed to be cleaned up immediately. One day, I'm taking a stroll around the club to check on things when I spot a small boy about two years old, taking a massive dump right in the middle of the play area. He sees me, starts to cry, and runs away with no clothing on the lower half of his body. I get on the radio and can't think of what to say as we hadn't discussed a code for human feces in the play area, a naked kid running around, so I just called, I have a code poo situation in the play area and piglets on the loose. You, deleted, said here, I was sitting with a group of guys by where Mickey and Minnie get dressed. When they came out, the guys started catcalling Minnie, the guy that was Mickey said, in a perfect Mickey voice, if you look at my girlfriend again I'm gonna pop you off, quote, my neighbor, he died a couple of years ago, so I'm safe in telling this worked at Disney for years. One day he was stocking shelves in the gift shop and came around the corner and nearly ran into none. Other than Paul and Linda McCartney, before he could stop himself, he loudly exclaimed, holy shit, it's the McCartneys. He immediately realized how big of a breach of Disney cast member etiquette he had committed and turned 12 shades of red. But before anything bad could happen, Paul and Linda just smiled and laughed and introduced themselves. Apparently they were wonderfully laid back about such things, and quite used to surprised reactions when people recognized them in public. He didn't get into any trouble. His boss saw the whole episode and thought it was hilarious. And I think they both signed a hat or something for him as they were checking out saw a recent video on YouTube of a Ray talking to this little girl and her dad had just started filming. Apparently the story the little girl was telling got Ray laughing so hard. She had to turn her face away and eventually got up and ran away because she couldn't stop laughing at whatever the little girl's story was. Super adorable.